know in yesterday's video as well as having white balance problems there at the beginning and this gray looked kind of brown yes I can hardly believe that I did not catch this mistake when I was editing yesterday I also had a problem with some of the uh, pieces of tape where was it one of, one of these I noticed I'd screwed up on this one right here the very first one it was at uh, a bit of a bad angle here and I, I saw that when I was editing I think that's pretty good And I know, I've, I know I've said that before, but I can often see stuff when I'm editing that I can't see, even with my magnification hood like right now, because you were seeing something that I wasn't seeing. Now this one here, I can, I think I could quite easily fix. I can just take it up and, and move it over just a, a little bit here. At least that's going to be the, the plan. I do believe that's some better. Now, in all likelihood, n nobody would have noticed that anyway. Now, th there was another one too. I noticed. I think it was, I think it was this one over here. Yeah, I don't know if there's much I can do about that. Another thing I've got to do is I want to take a uh, the the uh, the dark gray paint and go around the edges and let it seal seal all, all around like we did here with the deck town. Now this is Sprue B and something unique that I noticed about Sprue B um, and by the way I'm sure some of the viewers already know why I got this sprue out but if you want to read the numbers on it you have to have it this way up but I was noticing I can't read the numbers for this one and in order to read the numbers on for these ones you have to turn the sprue over now that's kind of unusual now you now you can read the numbers uh yeah I, I, there was no, nothing like that on the bismarck i'd remember that uh and this could well be the only sprue in the, with the hood that's like this yeah unique anyway why do we have sprue b well, we want, where's my pointer? We want B4 and we want B31. Now there were a lot of viewers who saw what I missed. Thank you so much for commenting. Okay, there's B4. We'll get it later. Now, 31. Okay, let's get the Tamiya nippers and get those cleaned up. Now these uh, pieces are going to require uh, other pieces being put on. So we'll uh, do a real good job of cleaning them up later when we're doing that. And then they're going to have to be painted and so on. Okay, now the small one. Oh, oh no, that's okay. I thought for a minute there I shaved off at the corner, but uh, I well, I shaved off a little bit of it there, didn't I? The, these things are, are so incredibly sharp, you have to be really careful. Anyway, now I'll show you where they're going to go. Like I say, I think some of you already know. Okay, there is going to be a life raft go on the top of that one. And on this one, on the side, there's supposed to be a ladder. I think, I think it goes this way. 
guess we'll have to check and see which which way the ladder goes on. It does appear to be a little mark on the side there. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, that is what is supposed to go on these. Now we're probably not going to be needing this for a long while. And uh, when we get to it, we'll remember. Now we're going to want to get these painted here and give this paint a chance to shrink. I'm using the thinned out version. If you remember, we uh, we thinned it out. Probably, I'm guessing, 60% paint and 40% uh, thinner. And it it did spray really, really well. But it's Looks like maybe I'm putting it on too heavy here. I just want to make sure that if there is a gap between the the, uh, the tape and the deck, that it does find its way through. And the uh, the lighter gray that we're going to be putting on later won't find its way through. It'll just sort of plug it up. Well, we've talked about that. I think this will help. You know, it, it could be that this is is too thin. Maybe use something. Should I use something a little thicker? But but this will help anyway. Okay, I'm gonna stick the macro lens on, and uh, we'll just do the another one here that you can see up close. This, this right here that I'm touching right now is tape. Okay, I think we've got them pretty good here. Do the other one on the other side the same way. Now I was just looking at this here. About five minutes has passed, I guess. It's not dry yet. But uh, right here, underneath where, where the uh, pointer is, that is deck tan. And uh, yeah. So it's, uh, I know there's deck tan somewhere. Yeah, the, the deck tan is here, and this part here is the uh, is the gray. Um, well, I can always touch it up later if it seeped through and spoiled the deck tan.
Okay, using a vegetable bag here. I think that should work. Now, one thing that I have noticed about this yellow frog tape, and I remember recommending it to one of the other viewers, and I didn't realize when I recommended it that, yes, it has the ability to, to let go uh, really well without pulling off the tape. I am finding that it, it has a tendency to want to let go all by itself and when you don't want it to. Like you'll, you'll stick it down and then you'll find that you, later on it's, it's lifted back up, especially off of uh, places where I've already painted. And so I think that when, when I go to do the individual boxes, I'm going to have to be sure to just sort of make sure that the tape is down and around. In other words, I don't want to blanket spray everything all at the same time if I can help it. Now some areas like like this area here is pretty good. I don't think you need to worry about it, but these ones here. Anyway, I just have to watch what I'm doing here. I'm seeing th deck through there, that's not good. This is the Tamiya tape, this piece here. I actually like this Tamiya tape, it seems to be pretty good. Now can I get a piece to go right through there and sort of kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Alright. here. I guess it's better safe than sorry. Tape isn't that expensive. Okay, now put on my magnifying hood and make sure I'm not seeing any bare decking through there. See, the problem is that the, the gray has sort of painted over onto the masking tape and it's kind of hard to see where you have an, a bare decking where you have uh, masking tape that's painted. I am pretty sure that the paint we put on here a few hours ago now has shrunk down about as much as it's going to get. In other words, all the uh, the moisture has evaporated out of the paint. And it's sort of like shrink wrap. It's as good as it's going to get. And I'm satisfied with what I see. I think we're probably safe now to go ahead and start spraying on our lighter gray. As I'm editing out this last video clip that you see here now, I notice movement in my surveillance monitor. I look up and I can see the mailman coming. There's a little box sticking out of his mailbag. I was pretty sure I knew what it was. By the time he had the doorbell rang, I was at the door to greet him. We're gonna be having a box opening. You're welcome.
Well, that looks pretty much like how it looked in the uh, on the internet. No, I don't think we're going to have time to try everything out today. And there's our liquid mask. All right. I wonder if we're going to be able to use this today. And we can try this out today too. I wonder how well it's going to work in uh, ultrasonic bath. My nose is kind of, kind of foamed up, kind of soapy, I guess. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, I do believe we're going to have time to do a little spraying today, this afternoon. But, uh, uh, you know me, I can't talk and work at the same time. I just want to cover this up here. I don't want to spray over my samples. Anyway, here, here's what's happened. I just got off the phone with our friend Tony here in Canada. And I was asking him what ratio did he think I should use the Mr. Color uh, thinner with, a, with the paint. And he was suggesting, well, you take a, you know, a, uh, an, an unthin jar, of course, and you thin it out. And he was suggesting that we just do a sample. That's, that's what this is all about right here. And... Uh, just do a sample at the ratio of uh, 30%. In other words, seven drops of, of paint and three drops of thinner, 30%. Now, I've got one jar here. Okay, this, where is it here? It says opened on it. Okay, it says opened. However, I think all I did was open it and dip my little brush in it to get a tiny little bit. Uh, I couldn't have used very much because these things only weigh about 51 grams brand new, I think. Well, here's a brand new one. Yeah, 51.1. Okay, so I think it's probably safe to use this one. I know that I didn't thin it because if I was to have thinned it, I would have put a T on there. That's my, my system. So I, I do have two brand new jars, never been opened, but we'll save those. We'll use this one. And we'll, and we'll just do a sample. And, and his recommendation, and by the way, Tony said he's been br airbrushing since he was 15, and he just now turned 70. And, and I know that he doesn't mind me saying that because he mentioned it in one of his comments to somebody earlier. So, yeah, he's in other words, everything that can possibly go wrong, he's probably gone wrong. Murphy's Law probably lives in at his model bench right now. Um... Okay, so, so I'm just going to go ahead and thin this one out to 30% uh, uh, thinner. And I, I took the lid off this and smelled it a while ago. It's, it's not near as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now, I can well imagine, though, that once I start spraying, I am going to be able to smell it here in the house. Fortunately, today is not cold enough that I can't open all my windows and air the place out later. Anyway, I've got to get on to it. Uh, or, or we're just not going to get it done here and uh, our episode is going to be late so I'm just going to turn the camera off thin this out and I guess the next thing you'll see me doing is spraying this okay we are set up here you might say a little bit precariously and as I mentioned in my phone call with Tonia that I'm finding I'm getting more and more klutzy all the time or something to that effect Okay, it's filled up to the five milliliter mark there. I think if we bring it up, mm, a little bit more maybe. I'm thinking that's probably about 30%. Now it's not measured scientifically because these are, you know, not the right shape for that, not the right size. Maybe I should get some others. Or I could have used the graduations on the pipettes too, I guess. Anyway, let's uh, mix this up and uh, see what we can do. I'm just going to use a cheap paintbrush here to mix this up. 
Make sure the bristles are scraping the sides good and getting in the corners and diluting it down. I'm not going to put this in my paint shaker. Just so how's that look? Uh, it's it's definitely thinned, and that's for sure. Okay. I do have my windows open. Um, the wind is unfortunately not coming in the back windows, it's coming in the front. So it's going to take the odor and run it all the way through the house. But it will eventually clear. Well, that seems to be pretty good. Maybe it could have been a little thinner. All right. I'm just going to go and wash this out while I have the chance here now. Although I have a lot of them. Why worry about it? Okay, I'm going to do my very best to hold this in your field of vision here. But I do got to concentrate on what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to have the airbrush right now. It's set for about 20 pounds. And, uh, well... Here we go. That little cap was kind of stuck on there the wrong way. Sort of like cross-threaded, I guess. Now, we're not going to need very much for this. Just set that on there, and I'll put my face mask on and uh, get our fan going, and then talk to you later.
Okay, I'm just going to finish cleaning up my airbrush here. And uh, where's that part that we've sprayed? Okay, we'll take a good look at this after it's completely dried. We'll look at it at the beginning of tomorrow's episode. I don't know if I'm going to be doing any more today or not. And if I do any more today, that'll be at the beginning of tomorrow's episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.